Now, during the 2015 election, Road Trip was the Tories' not-so-secret weapon, a dynamic organisation which bussed young activists around the country to campaign in marginal seats and have fun while they were about it. But when a young activist took his own life in September, the organisation and its founder, Mark Clark, found itself facing difficult questions. Allegations of bullying, harassment, even blackmail surfaced. Now, a Newsnight investigation has raised troubling questions about whether the party failed to act on numerous warnings about Clark over more than five years. Yesterday, in response to Newsnight's request for comment, the party banned Clark for life. Here's James Clayton. This is a story of bullying, blackmail and sexual harassment. Of a senior Conservative Party organiser who stands accused of intimidating and exploiting young activists as he was lauded by party bosses. And it's a story of how time and time again complaints were ignored by Conservative Central Office. It was unfortunately swept under the carpet because we didn't want to end up having the general election a result uh, uh, lost. Road Trip was a campaigning operation established to bus Conservative campaigners, mainly members of the party's youth wing, Conservative Future, around the country. The idea was to get young people out to marginal seats to help sell a Conservative dream. Are you going to be a part of this next time? Are you going to help change the future of our country? It was the brainchild of this man, Mark Clark, a former Conservative parliamentary candidate. After the Conservative election win in 2015, he was fated by both the chairman of the Conservative Party and the Prime Minister, no less, for his running of the organisation. But behind the scenes of celebration in Conservative HQ, there was a problem. Over a five-year period, complaint after complaint about Mark Clark had been fed into Conservative Central Office, also known as CCHQ, and nothing appears to have been done about them. The student vote is really important. We as students make up... Then, in September, this young Conservative activist tragically took his own life. And we are going to be deciding the general election. And it was a very bright, very imaginative lad from a very early age. People loved him. He raised the, the humour levels, he, he lifted the, the gloom in the room, and uh, he had friends in all quarters. Uh, we, uh, we were visited by the, by the police on the evening of the late evening of the 15th of September to tell us that they'd found the body of a young man. They uh, described the, the contents that he'd got in his bag. This his um, Union Jack wallet, for example, his Winston Churchill fob watch, which we bought for him for his 18th birthday. But it just, uh, it just broke us. Elliot Johnson had made a formal complaint about Mark Clark to CCHQ a month before he decided to take his own life. He told the party that in the pub behind me, Mark Clark had threatened to ruin his career by revealing that he had a police caution, a minor misdemeanor. After Clark found out about the complaint, he met Elliot in a different pub with an associate, Andre Walker. Elliot secretly recorded the meeting. Walker warned him that he was on the wrong side of an internal battle. Everyone who tracks, who align themselves to this government, got shot for it in the end. And if you want to become a dickhead, like a Japanese you know, soldier on not inhabited island still fighting the war that was over years ago, do it. Then, Clark appears to repeat the threat that Elliot had complained about. Have you spoken to the Commons authorities about the reporting of the Commons? I'm not worried about this thing. This is what I found very, not say entertaining, but, you know, I thought it was a bit weird you trying to say, but I know you have this and we're going to do one thing first. So what do they do not care? They just do not care. Elliot spoke of Clark's bullying in a letter that his parents found after he died. It wasn't the first complaint that had been lodged to CCHQ. Road trip campaign days were often finished by boozy dinners and drinks. It was paid for by CCHQ. I went on one of the first road trips. It may actually have been the first road trip. It was by the time that we got to the Harlow one that you could start to see the darker elements that I started to pick up on the first trip was actually a thing. These were considered normal. Mark pulled me aside and he pointed out that he knew that I was quite outspoken, that he'd seen me criticising certain things that the party was doing. 
certain campaign things and said that I should be on board and that I could have all of these favours. They could do great things for me if I joined them. At that point, he tried making a move on me and I backed away. He stroked my arm and tried to put his hand up my skirt and I backed off and said, get off me, basically. I went back into the room, or as I was trying to get back into the room to get past him, he sort of said, if you're not one of us, we can destroy you, basically. We will destroy you. If you speak out against us or try to take us on, we will ruin you. We'll make sure that you don't have any kind of career in public affairs or in Parliament. And he said that he had a dossier of information about my sex life and that of my partner, and that if I didn't stop crossing him, that would be used to damage both of us. The woman who we are calling Natasha said she complained to CCHQ in the summer of 2014. I complained that I didn't think the way that Mark and the other road trip activists behave was particularly fitting, considering that they were representing the party. And I said that I didn't think the way that he had approached me and tried to pressure me, blackmail me, when I wouldn't do what he liked, and that I didn't think that the way he treated women, by pressuring them into sex, or groping them without their consent, was a good idea. I got an acknowledgement email back saying, we've received your complaint, and I heard nothing more. Newsnight has spoken to five other activists who say they made complaints to CCHQ before Elliot's death. So why was no action taken? A Conservative Party spokesman told Newsnight, party chairman Lord Feldman, acted immediately to set up an internal disciplinary inquiry as soon as he received the allegations in August 2015, of which he was previously wholly unaware. Yet one of his own MPs, Ben Howlett, who himself chaired Conservative Future from 2010 to 2013, rejects his party's explanation of events. We've complained about him for a long period of time, and it's not just him, it's people that were attributed to him as well. I complained when I was national chairman directly to Saeed Avazi as the party chairman. I complained directly to uh, the chairman's office when um, Grant Shapps took over as the party chairman. And um, I have to say, Lord Feldman has been well aware of all of this um, for, for a very long period of time, and he back me up on this, which I was pleased about, but effectively, you know, somewhere, somewhere along the lines, all of those complaints uh, about him and others uh, in the uh, Conservative Party um, had somewhat been distanced and been ignored, and it was uh, not investigated at that time, unfortunately. Um, water off a duck's back, ignore it, move on. Um, but it was a succession of different issues, and I have to admit, it had taken its toll on myself and you know yes I might be an MP now but the bullying that I ended up having to put up with through a successive number of years took its toll on me and you know I've had my own mental health issues as a result of that. So what form did these complaints take? What happened with them? Well there were a huge range of complaints, I have to say, um, whether or not it was from bullying, uh, bullying complaints, uh, I mean that was my own personal circumstance, or, or whether or not uh, it was uh, women who were complaining uh, in relation to uh, different advances etc he was making, um, and that's for them to make complaints about, and no doubt they've um, spoken to your programme about it as well, but there's a, a, a huge number. Mark Clark was able to influence and even blackmail young activists by abusing a supposed position he had in the party. He described himself as a director in CCHQ, something that CCHQ deny. In one message seen by Newsnight, Clark used this supposed position in CCHQ to threaten a Conservative Future branch that was not bringing in enough student volunteers to road trip. He said, we could ruin them, ban all Tory speakers, blacklist the leadership for failing to campaign properly in a way that would follow them their entire career and much more personal stuff. In another email, he told the volunteer, you had applied for an internship at CCHQ and were awaiting the outcome of your interview. I have to tell you that you will not be offered an internship with CCHQ. Furthermore, I have to put you on notice that should you be inadvertently offered a job with any Conservative MP or another part of the Conservative Party, I will advise them to immediately terminate your employment. Since CCHQ have been made aware of Newsnight allegations, the party says it has banned Mark Clark for life. It also says that it's withdrawn Road Trip's official accreditation as an official campaign organisation for the party. But how did Mark Clark get away with it for so long? Within Conservative Future, after I left, I 
would say that there was institutionalised bullying within the within conservative future, and uh, it was unfortunately swept under the carpet in the big sort of um, scheme of things because we didn't want to end up having the general election a result uh, uh, lost. I can imagine, and you don't want to talk about those sort of things whilst the general election's going on. Well, I find it staggering if uh, Ben Howard MP has has has, has come out and, and damned. Uh, Shaps and Feldman for not having acted against complaints that have been made on numerous numerous occasions by young adults. Um, if these these turn out to be true, then Lord Feldman and Shaps should look to their consciences and they should resign immediately. So we're going to walk down here. Clark told Newsnight he strongly refuted all allegations of bullying, harassment, assault, or attempted blackmail. He said. I believe that these false allegations and this media firestorm are related to the events surrounding Elliot's sad death. As such, I will be cooperating with the coroner and providing him with the fullest information. This is the proper process. After the inquest, I will look to take legal action for defamation in respect to these allegations. The Conservative Party is still to publish its own internal inquiry into Clark and there are ongoing coroner and police inquiries into Elliot Johnson's suicide. What's clear? is that this is a scandal that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. James Clayton with that report. And uh, as we were going on air tonight, we learned that in response to that report, the Tory party has suspended the national executive of Conservative Future and taken its youth wing under direct control. A spokesman told us we've been checking and rechecking, but we haven't been able to find any records of complaints that were made but not dealt with, but we're determined to get to the bottom of what has happened.